So in this first video, we're going to talk about the pre-check phase and then the deploy phase. So for the pre-check phase, let's delve deeper and find out exactly what is going on under the hood. So if we're looking at the logs during the pre-check phase, the log we want to look at is the migration-assistant.log. The first thing that will happen is we'll check whether or not the user that's running the migration assistant has the required privileges. So we'll see the, the message sanity check admin privilege, process has admin privilege. So this indicates that we have the required permissions. The next thing that happens is we'll try and discover all of the registered extensions. In this example, we can see in the discover installed products line, that we have vom installed. So it's detected update managers installed and registered to this particular vCenter server. The next thing that occurs is we will detect the deployment node and we'll also detect what ports are currently in use. And then we will also detect the SSO domain name. So in this example, we're using the default vSphere.local, but your domain name may be different. Again, this is taken out of the migration assistant.log. Next, we will estimate what is the required disk space usage to perform the migration. This is a rough estimation and isn't, may not 100% be accurate, but it is a, a good indicator of how much free space will be needed. So look for the keywords parse export estimates from pre-upgrade output, again in the migration assistant.log. Next, we'll validate the certificates against the FQDN of the machine. So we'll compare the actual certificates from the vCenter server with the FQDN of the machine itself and make sure that they are valid. Then verify the service health. So we'll make sure that all the services are running, that they're in a healthy green state. And if that passes, then we will display any pre-migrate warnings. So in this example, we're just warning that update manager is registered and that there may be some host baseline or upgrade baselines that are no longer compatible with update manager 6.5. These won't be migrated over. So we'll only migrate over host baselines that will be compatible with, with update manager 6.5. Next, again, we'll validate the export directory permissions just to make sure that we have the permissions to write to the export directory. And we'll again verify the free space just as a, a double, double verification. We'll then detect the number of network interfaces. Now, in this example, we only have one network interface uh, available, so there's only one to choose from. In the event that there are more than one network interfaces, the interface that will be selected will be the one that matches the FQDN of the machine. So whichever IP address resolves to the FQDN. We'll also discover the complete network information and we'll print this again to the migration assistant.log. This includes the DNS servers, any DNS suffixes, the FQDN, gateway, MAC address, etc. And lastly, for the pre-check phase, once everything has, has concluded, the migration assistant itself will start listening on port 9123. It'll effectively create a HTTPS server and it'll display a self-signed certificate thumbprint. This is just so that when you are connecting to the migration assistant from the VCSA installer, you will be presented with that same thumbprint and it's so you can verify that you're connecting to the correct server. During the pre-check, all of the components have their own ind individual log. So in var log VMware upgrade on the target vCenter server appliance, you'll be able to find these logs. So look for the collect requirement log files, and there'll be one for update manager, the database, SSO, etc. So each individual component will have its own pre-check log. So that's the pre-check phase. We'll now just talk briefly about the deploy phase. So in the deploy phase, we're focusing here on the stage two deployment. So stage one is where the vCenter server OVF just gets deployed to an ESXi host, and stage two is where we're doing some additional configuration. So what we're looking at here is we're detecting the Active Directory configuration. So my Windows vCenter server was joined to Active Directory. So to maintain that domain join relationship, we want to join the vCenter server appliance to the same AD domain. So it detects the domain controller that the vCenter server is joined to and it'll also recheck the network information. So again, it'll print out the network information, the vSphere domain information, the deployment type, and things like that. So you can use the keyword retrieve pre-check results to see this information. So that concludes the pre-check and the deploy phase. The next phase is the export phase, and we'll delve a little bit deeper into that and look at all the different logs and export processes that are involved there. I hope you enjoyed this video.